Welcome back to the GEX1. I am the Radio Man 03, and we are playing Minecraft on the Xbox One. Great to have you along. Welcome to episode 38. Hope you are doing well. It is a Friday afternoon. I have a fresh cup of coffee right next to me. Ding a ding a ding. The beautiful music, it chimes in. Oh, I went up and harvested the potatoes so we could have some potatoes to eat. Did I leave anything in here? No. Watch this. Woohoo! Look at me, move. Look at how fast I am. I'm Mr. Fast Pants over here. <laughs> I got the beacon up and running. Uh, it's right over there, and we're going to take a look at it in just a second. But I just went down into the, uh, you know, into the furnace room to pick up some stuff and some XP. I wanted to make sure we got our 30 XP. Look at the iron. Ugh. Not looking too good in there, is it? Looking pretty shabby up here. 19 blocks, not bad. It took a lot of iron to get the two beacons that we have running, running. Uh, well, let's go right over here right now and take a look at it. This is our beacon. Uh, it is massive, just absolutely massive. I'm not quite sure. I have enough skulls to do the other two in here. Uh, what I'm not sure about is this. We have speed two, and we have jump boost two. Is it jump boost? Yeah, jump boost two. Now, I could jump out of here just fine. Matter of fact, I can jump a too high wall. Whoosh, like that, no problem. The thing about it is, is that when you're running and you jump, sometimes it it tends to take you straight up, and then you've got to wait to come back down. So you're you're not uh, actually moving forward anymore if you jump incorrectly. Uh, the other thing I'm not too sure about is the speed too. Although I love the fact that I'm moving this fast, I tend to get myself hung up on corners a little bit more because it is a little more difficult to hit some of the curves that I have here at the GEX One. You, you, you wind up bouncing into a few more things. Now, I, I do love the fact that we are going this fast. It's very cool. I can I can actually get through the GE so quick now. It's, it's just unbelievable how fast I can get through here. But I'm thinking I might want to reduce it down to speed one and jump one. Uh, in terms of how I want things to work um, around the GE itself. Now, when we are, of course... Uh, working in the mine and doing things like that, I think I'm going to want the, the faster speeds. Those of you who do not know how to use a beacon, people like myself in the last video, wasn't quite sure how to get this thing turned on or how much iron block it was going to take. But you can see we, we're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is a 10 by 10 area, okay? A 10 by 10 area. Now, to get the beacons to work, I have... Uh, I have the quartz around the outer edge of this. We're going to seal this up today. And then I have glass blocks right here where the other two beacons will go. Now, if I go ahead and uh, I think what I have to do is actually break the beacon. And then that will deactivate the beacon. And I, I think what I want to do here is I want to go speed one and jump one. I don't think I want to have the two, the two on the speed or on the other. So let's go ahead and put these back in. I removed this. I know we weren't going to remove it until we started building above ground, but I needed to remove it just so we could actually get in here to uh, get these fired up. Okay, so first thing you do, we want speed. Click on speed. It's activated. You can see the color of the box change. Add an iron ingot. Check mark. Okay. We currently have s speed on here. We have speed one. So if you look here, we've got speed for, it, it rotates like every eight seconds, the speed one comes on. Now this is speed one. If you look at this, this is nice. This is faster than what a normal run is. I can control it very easily. I'm not getting myself hung up on corners. And I like that. I like the fact that I am moving faster while I'm running, even while I walk. Oh, let's, let's walk. Even while I walk, I walk a little bit faster. This is probably about as fast as the regular run is on Minecraft. So the walk is very nice. Now for the jump, I can hit jump and I can do this and check mark. Boom. Now we have jump. Jump one. Jump one. Jump boost one. Speed one. So now I'm running and I can, when I jump, I'm jumping in nice, nice, smooth forward motion. I like that. I can no longer, oh, I can just still jump the two blocks. Look at that. That's excellent. So what's the point of having jump two if I don't, I guess jump two, I was actually, I was actually clearing the two block height, huh? Right there, my feet actually kind of clip the edge. But I think I want to stick with the speed one and the jump boost one for inside the GEX one down here in the mine. 
I think this is plenty help. Hey, hey, I'm making a video here. And your slimy guts is making a lot of noise, buddy boy. Why don't you get on in here and do some cooking? <laughs> sizzle. Sizzle, baby, sizzle. By the way, how's the slime doing anyways? Ah, pretty good, pretty good. We got two, uh, two full double chests inside the storage area there. Ooh, magic to my ears, the slime going. Okay, back to the beacon. I think I want to go with just the one up here. And then we, we put our beacon wherever we're strip mining or we find an area to, to mine out and things like that. That's where we use the, uh, we're going to use haste to and speed to and, and things like that. That's where that would make more sense to me. Now this is carrying all the way up outside. So if I go over to the, the stables or over where we've got our little tiny crops going, even over by the, the sugar cane that I have growing along the shoreline, we're moving fast. Not to mention this also helps, which is a nice thing to have. This also speeds up the, 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 the rate of swimming that we do when we're going up inside here. So I think that's really nice as well. We can actually traverse the, uh, the water vader a little bit faster. So I'm really happy with how these look too. They look absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, we have six more. We actually have seven more skulls. So I can get the other two beacons for in here. And I'll do that, uh, but at a different time. You guys saw me fight the Wither Boss and it was really uneventful. The second fight was just as uneventful. He exploded and he sat there. I killed him and that was it. I suppose I could take him outside, but I really don't want to have to deal with dying and, and running back out there over and over again to, to get to him. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I want the beacons. That's, that's what I want is the beacons, baby. The beacons. So uh, next stop for us is over by the villagers. I had some bad things happen with the villa One villager in particular. You know, we had the, uh, we had the, um, I always forget his name, the blacksmith, the blacksmith villager that we were doing a coal trade with. And he was awesome because we wound up going down to where four emeralds would get us a pair of iron boots, but then uh, we could trade him 10, 12 times and get emeralds with the coal. So I went out coal holing and I got a bunch of coal and came back and I started trading with that guy again. Well, guess what? That guy had one more trade hidden way at the end. And you know what that trade was? You know what that trade was? That stinking trade? It was eight emeralds for a diamond hoe. Well, I'll tell you what happened to him. He's no longer with us. <laughs> I fired him. He is fired. We still have this priest. He's got glowstone for emeralds, and he has a nice efficiency on three and breaking three. I'm going to mess around with this uh, priest here a little bit more and see if uh, I can't get a few more trades open on him. This guy is new. I, I worked on getting a few new villagers in here, so that guy is new. Uh, that's John Cole. Uh, this guy's brand new. He wants three emeralds for a bookshelf. I don't know that I'm going to be keeping these guys. We already had him. Uh, and so I actually reduced quite a few villagers. I got rid of several of the villagers that we had in here, including Mr. Blacksmith with the coal trade. He wound up being a bad trade. But before I got rid of him, I went ahead and picked us up. Uh, here, here's our diamond hoe. Oh boy! Yeah, diamond hoe. Um, this is what I did. I went ahead and I traded up. Uh, most of our emeralds are now gone. We're going to have to go... Uh, mining and strip mining and stuff and get some more or find another villager that we could trade with to get more but I traded uh, and I got uh, four I actually picked up six diamond picks off of him and I do now have efficiency five silk touch one on breaking three and we have an efficiency five on breaking three which is great for the instant mining once we get that going so that's going to be nice when we have our next beacon and we can take it down into the branch mine we'll be able to strip out a whole bunch of ground with that I also accidentally bought another axe from him as well as the diamond hoe. Uh, so that took care of that. The other thing I did was we had a um, we had a, a second priest. His his trade was the uh, Ender Eyes, and then he had diamond swords next. So I did wind up picking up uh, some more diamond swords. I bought those off of him first. When he stopped trading me diamond swords, I killed him off, so he's gone as well. But we have a nice little supply of swords and the picks, which I think was a, a pretty good idea before before I offed him. I said, you guys are you guys are history, you're toast. Don't like your trades no more? Get out of my world. Get out of my GE. Don't appreciate you trying to rip me off. So anyways, that's the, that. That's what happened with the villagers. I have not moved these back like I wanted to. I completely forgot about it until we walked in here just now. Um, do you ever have one of those times when you play Punch 2? Punch
damage to. I get that off skeletons all day long. I don't know if the books are so worth it anymore. Maybe when we can uh, enchant more books at once, like when we have our Enderman farm and stuff going, it'll be better to do that. Um, you ever play Minecraft and feel like you just aren't getting anywhere? Uh, I, I felt that way this week. I felt that way this week. I didn't get to play a whole lot. And the reason I haven't recorded much is because the, the guys that were going to uh, fix my roof several weeks ago finally managed to get here to do it because it has been raining so much. So... Uh, I, I've had people right above my head all week long banging and scraping and, and nailing things down and stuff like that. So, you know, it's been extremely busy at my house. And to be honest with you, most of the week I have not really felt like myself. You know, right now, today, I feel like myself. I'm in a really good mood. I'm happy, go lucky, and just ready to play some Minecraft and, and be creative and, and, and do a few things. Uh, like, number one, we're going to close this beacon in, baby. We are going to close her in. Yeah, indeed we are. Um, so, it, there was a couple of reasons for it. Uh, but the, the biggest reason, of course, is uh, the fact that I had uh, roofers on my roof right over my game room, you know, making all that noise. So, of course, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't build. I couldn't talk on the microphone or anything else. You know, they're dropping stuff on the roof and everything else, but... Uh, uh, the good news is, is the roof is almost fixed. The people we bought the house from, they were the do-it-yourselfer kind of folks. <laughs> and some of that I do myself, but there are certain things that I will not do to my own home. And that is mess with structural supports as well as the roof. Uh, I don't like working with electrical stuff either. Electricity scares me. Variety 3 actually does the electrical work in the house. I do the plumbing and the cabinet hanging and... Uh, um, uh, flooring and things like that, but I will not touch electricity. And I'm certainly not going to touch uh, structural support beams in my home or the, the roof of my home. You know, those things are very, very important to have a good solid roof. So anyways, wh whoever lived here before we did, and we know who they were, um, they, uh, <laughs> they redid this roof a couple of years back, a couple of years before we bought the house, Variety and I bought this house. Uh, we had had uh, one heck of a winter. We hundreds, a couple, more, well, well over a hundred inches of snow we received in the winter time, and it caused the roof over my game room and the actually the little entryway into my home to collapse. And um, <laughs> they rebuilt the roof themselves. Well, this guy has been up on my roof now for several days, and um, he is finding all kinds of junk that is not done correctly. And so it's, it's costing me a little more to get my roof fixed. One thing is the skylights are, are messed up and he's got to do a lot of extra work to the skylights. I think I've got that there, that there. Yes, I did. Right here, right here. So basically he couldn't get the job done because the skylights that they have in right now, the materials that surround the flashing that surrounds the skylights is all outdated now. And so they actually have to go to a manufacturer in order to get those pieces because they don't sell them in stores anymore. Those specs for these particular skylights have changed. Well, do I want to spend $180 on some new flashing from a manufacturer or do I want to spend $500 on skylights? Huh. Well, I can tell you which one I picked. Yeah. So they're ordering the flashing. So next week they'll be able to do that. Um, let me know. You know, I could do... I could do this right here. I, I actually got to hit the edge of these blocks here in order to get the carpet to lay over these. There we go. I could do this, or I could leave these open. Let me know what you think. I kind of like them like this. So as we run through the base, I mean, you can actually see the beacons in the floor. I kind of like that. So I think I want to leave those open like that. And that's why I use the quartz on the side to give that shiny white like that. I think that looks pretty cool. I could use um, iron blocks in there, but um, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the, uh, uh, the quartz. The quartz looks pretty nice. Let's drop that off. Okay, that is another part of what I want to talk to you about. The villagers, and we got the beacon all sealed up and looking sweet. I will get a couple more beacons and put them in there. I don't know what other choices I will use on the beacons. Um, we have haste. Uh, strength and resistance. Resistance doesn't make much sense down here because we're really not in any danger. Uh, haste. Uh, 
there's there you know in terms of the work right in this general area we're pretty much done with it outside of maybe cleaning up the walls i still haven't decided if i want to clean up the walls we are going to uh clean this up here the the hole that leads down here we're going to have a nice design going on and appear and i'm thinking about doing some redstone lamps that flash on and off up the edges of each side sort of a bump 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 like that up to the top i think that would be kind of cool but i'm not quite sure what i want i would like the regeneration down here regeneration and maybe strength add those two things in here i don't know i don't know let me know what you guys think about that what should i go with on the beacons all right let's eat some food let's see what we got we've got our good armor on we got that uh you know what hey slammer welcome to your death boy <laughs> let's uh Let's head into the nether. I want to show you what I've been tinkering around with in there. This is another thing where I, I kind of thought I was going to make some serious progress on here. And I really haven't. Hello, Bessie. Uh, and I really haven't made much progress in here. I do have a little furnace going right here, cooking up uh, nether bricks, another nether brick for us. And um, let's see, before we do this, let's go ahead and drop this off in here, this off in here. Uh, see, there's our six wither skull. So we're, we're prepped and ready to rock and roll this is an infinity bow but it's nearly broken so i'm going to take extra arrows with us like so let's actually just leave this bow right in here we'll probably fix that one up maybe what else we have in here power four flame one let's take that one with us right now while we go up above and we want uh let's see we got a looting three sharpness three. let's take this one with us that way if we encounter some wither skulls we can use that to uh hopefully monopolize on them i'm going to take an invisibility potion and a fire resistance potion and i'm going to take a pail of milk with us all right let's go now we can put a beacon in here as well and that would be pretty helpful especially with the regeneration while we're up here working and uh, killing withers and stuff like that i still find that while i'm busy fighting in here or working in here Every now and again, I'll get an occasional wither that manages to spawn behind me, and he sneaks up behind me, and then I get withered. So uh, there is that. So we're probably going to want a beacon down here with regeneration, just so we don't have to deal with that. Maybe with uh, strength on it as well, so that we could, uh, you know, cause there's so much much more damage to the enemies when we uh, encounter them. I've sort of set up a bit of a kill area here. I'm going to show this to you as soon as we clear out some of these guys here who shot me oh you there you go you can die uh let's see we gotta get rid of this guy right here there we go beautiful all right let's do that so what i've done is i've created a little bit of a walkway what i did was that this block right here was used to be the edge walkway like that one right over there and what I did was I took that down because that is a spawning area for the wither skeletons. Oh, look at that. He's Oh, look at him. Look at him fighting. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I hadn't seen that before. That wither skeleton was ticked off, baby. He was ticked off. So we've got this little walkway now along here. Instead of running around these pathways and stuff, uh, we could just stand on these in this little area right here. And we're relatively safe. Relatively safe, I say, because we are not safe. I've been withered while I've been standing down there. Uh, if you're fighting them and you get too close to the edge uh, like this, the withers can come up and bump into you. Now, I did find on Radiocraft that if you put nether brick fencing up here, because withers are like 2.8 blocks tall, so they're almost three blocks tall. If you put nether rack fencing right along here, they can't get close enough to you, and you can actually push with your stomach up against the wall, and they won't be able to uh, get to you. Um, but I have this actually going. I'll take you for a little walk around here, but we, we of course, need to get rid of these guys because they're just going to cause us a bunch of trouble. Like that, we're on fire. Uh, the invisibility potion I'm holding on to because I've got an idea in my head, and I want to talk to you about it. We're going to have to leave this the sanctuary of this little tube to uh, to go out and look around. Uh, blaze up there. We'll clear down here. Oh, get that out. Um, I feel like we're relatively safe right now. Let's get this wither skull to come over here. And then we can just plop down inside this little hole here, and boom. It's the same sort of setup we have on Radiocraft right now. No skulls? No skulls. That's okay. 
But if, if I'm working down on this end down here, the withers will spawn down on this edge. So basically what I'm, what I'm getting at is this, this walkway right here and that walkway right there are really great spawn areas for the wither. Back and forth down both of these causeways, it's very, very good spawnage. So I put a little walkway across here so they can get, uh, they can see me when I'm standing over there, they can see me from here and they will walk over this as you saw and come over here and uh, try to get at me. So what I think I want to do is I want to encompass this area right here. This, these two walkways, some kind of a, like a, like an oval to, oh, good God almighty, you, oh, that scared me. I <laughs> turned around, big old blast of fire coming in my face. <laughs> okay, that scared me. Um, see, now, see, if I'm working down here, they're going to be spawning down there. And that makes me, oh, God, those gas, I tell you. Oh, it's just a pain. I want to hollow this out, though. I want to take this up and bring it around like this. And I want this to be our spawn pad for our withers right here all the way down and let me show you how far i want to go with it this is going to give us a nice supply of nether rack up there we can get a hold of that and turn it into nether brick and i kind of wanted to make it look natural in here like like uh i want it to look man-made by us but i also want it to fit in with the fact that we are in the nether so i think nether brick and uh we'll see what other material we use on it but um oh come here you um but i wanted to look like we built it but i want it to look like it fits here as well so i want it to come all the way down here blaze everywhere and and guys the the blaze farms are not working for people because these guys are spawning everywhere we talked about it in the last episode and i've read some more on it now too and people are really disappointed with the fact that they are limited to how many entities are in here right now it's 79 and oh gosh and they're just you're not able to get them going and once you once you come in your blaze farm works really well but then after a while it slows down because all these mobs are spawning all over the place all of these mobs are just sucking up space so um i i, I don't know what to do about the blaze farm right now part of me thinks we might be better off using the other blaze farm that uh, spawner that is sitting way out in the middle of nowhere I think that might be a better bet for us. The one that sits uh, way out over a lava lake, that might work a little bit better because there's there's less spawning areas for the mobs to be in. Hey, buddy, you got a skull for me? Huh? Huh? You got a skull for me? No, but you got some colon bones. You notice how those the withers, when they break, their items look like they're coming right into you, and then they don't. They snap back too far away from you. I've noticed that a couple of times now. And see, look at how fast they spawn here. So this is a really great area. So I'm going to turn this into our kind of our wither farm. Ugh, auto save. Gets me every time, man. Every single time. Causes lots of problems for me. I think I might have to start turning it off or turning it down or something. Uh, so that is the game plan up here. And that's going to be something I'm going to get started on in the next week. I, I want this kind of set up for us. This and our armory I want, I want set up. No. No skull. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. These guys just sneak right up on you, and they're just so mean. So mean. We get shot in the back by gas. I got blast protection on my armor and stuff. Oh, we've got pretty good armor. The diamond armor is really good, actually. We're doing all right. So that is my game plan. I want that glowstone dust. I want all of it. Thank you very much. I will be taking that. Thank you. And I'll take that coal as well. Tell you what, why don't you just die and give me your stuff? There you go. And that is the game plan right here, ladies and gentlemen. I think you might like that idea. And we will bring this all the way down to right where this ends, right here. And we'll make this just this nice big oval area. It'll be all cleared out. We won't have to worry about gas shooting at us. And we'll have something like this on both edges that we can walk all the way around the circumference of this, this big oval uh, sort of uh, capsule-like thing. And be able to kill withers and blaze and things like that. Or be up on top and, and really go all guts out and, and kill them like that. But that's kind of the game plan for how I want to work this. And the blaze farm, I'm hoping that with the... Uh, 
uh, is it uh, the T21 update? The TU21 update is going to be another bug patch for our console game. So hopefully that comes out soon. And maybe they'll add some more entities to the, uh, the Nether, allow us to have more so that Blaze Farms will work. But right now, apparently, they're really not worth building because you just can't keep it running very smoothly. You're almost better off just running around and killing them by sword or, or whatever. So uh, until I see otherwise... We're going to continue to hold off on a blaze farm, which I find to be extremely disappointing. I'm really kind of bummed out about that. Uh, we're doing pretty good with uh, getting some glowstone dust, though, and things like that going. And then here we just, uh, I could just throw it in here for now. Boom, like that. And what else do we, don't we need? We're going to go back into the overworld. We'll drop that off of there and that there. And we've got coal. And, uh, of course, tons of bones. Always tons and tons of bones. And let's get this armor and put this armor in here. That makes more sense to me. Just in case the gas, for some reason, blow, blasts up through here. And uh, drop off the arrows. Oh, my gosh. Are we out of arrows? There they are. There they are. Let's grab a couple of these swords. We'll bring these back with us and take them down to one of the mob farms. We'll take all of them back with us. Get them out of here so we've got a little more room. And we never did use the chest at need to. Perfect. The first thing I'll have to do up there is is decide the design of that, that, that oval shape. And then once I have that shape done, I can hollow it out, line it with block, and, and create the, the, the world that we want in there. So it'll be... I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to build it. Uh, extremely dangerous, of course, to build as well. But that's okay. I'm all about the danger, baby. I'm all about the danger. <laughs> Uh, what bow do I have? Power 4. Of, okay, we want to leave the bow behind, too. Uh, I'm not quite uh, as familiar with these chests down here as I'd like to be. Power 4, power 2, punch 1. What the heck happened to that one that I just had? Where's that infinity bow that I I had? What did I do with it? Did I stick it in here? Aha! There you are. There you are. Let's grab our arrow back. And uh, we're good to go. All right, beautiful. All right, let's head back. There's more to uh, there's more to talk about. More to talk about. And then I want to get started on this space as well. Our sort of our entrance way. We are going to need a central Nether location, uh, as far as a Nether hub goes, and that will be, of course, the portal that we use. And then we'll have to build a portal out by the stronghold, so we have quick access back and forth to that. Now the access to the porthole or the the, the end portal, I also want to be able to do, um, uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, I, I want to be able to do a path that leads all the way there so that we can, um, what time is it? We can ride the horses back and forth out there. I don't always want to just take a portal and go back and forth through the nether. Sometimes I want to, I want to take the horses and, and go for a nice long ride. Sometimes you just want to do that. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to do that. Um, boy, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure I had too much more I wanted to show you right now or talk about. Uh, just a quick update and kind of an apology for not being able to put any videos up this week because I've been so busy, uh, like I said, with the roof and just not feeling like myself this week. And, and uh, you know, you feel like you, you, you work on Minecraft so much, then you look around and you realize you didn't get much done, but then you did get stuff done, but it's not, it's not like building things. It's like the beacons up and running right now. Uh, I, I weeded out some of the villagers that were no good, but we have to get new villagers and, and get them in and, and make them work out and, and be good, uh, good villagers for us. So there's, there's those things that need to be done. Um, uh, those things that did get done that I'm, I'm glad I got done, but at the same time, I feel like you didn't do much. You didn't do much. But then I spent about three hours in the cave right over there and, and got a bunch of coal and stuff like that. So I spent time in a cave right there. I spent time in a cave. That, that, this cave here stretches all through here. And I spent in the cave over there. And I spent a bunch of time in caves uh, just getting iron and coal because we had an iron shortage, as you know, last time. So I could not get the beacon finished up. Let's let everybody out of their pens. They've been so good. Oh, I know one other thing I wanted to show you. I replaced Ace. Not that the other Ace was bad, but the other Ace was not quite the same, not quite the color I was looking for. So I went out and did some cow tipping uh, with the uh, looting three sword that we have on us. 
and I happened to be out on that prairie getting cows, and this guy showed up. He's a much darker brown, which I liked a lot more, and he also has a little more health to him. He has, has actually has, I think, half a heart or a heart and a half more. He's a good jumper. Oh, I think he's a good jumper. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? Yeah, he's a, he's a good jumper, and he's faster than the other ace was too. And this is the horse I wanted, this, this color horse. Now, I may swap him out too if I ever found one this color with the white stripe down his snout. If he ever comes, if I ever find a brown horse like this with the white stripe down its snout, I'll trade him in and that'll be the perfect ace. The perfect ace. But uh, yeah, so I traded in ace and, and got a new one. I turned the old ace loose out in the prairie, and I grabbed this one instead. And I think he's a he's a great addition. He's really beautiful. I love how the dark brown color on him. I, th I like it a lot. I think he looks really good. You are disturbing me. Thank you. Ah, peace. But you can see, yeah, he's, he's a beautiful horse. He is definitely a beautiful horse. There's Charlie, and we have Thunder still. I still need to go get Lightning. We'll have to do that someday. Go get Lightning and bring Lightning in here. So we have uh, Lightning and Thunder and Ace. Look at him little girl, though. I love being out here and just watching them naturally... You know, roam around, do their thing. But look at Thunder, going outside. Yeah, I feel like going outside for a while. And he does. I think it's really cool. <laughs> I love you guys. I think you're great. I love you guys. You are just absolutely awesome. All right, guys, that is a quick update on the GEX1. Next video, we are going to be back to building and getting some things done. And uh, the videos will be a little more regular, too. The guys that were working on my roof are actually going to have to come back next week for a day to uh, to fix the skylights and get the shingles put down. But that shouldn't take them too long. But, you know, just one day. So next Tuesday or Wednesday, they're going to be working on that. And it should take them about a day, and they'll be done with it. So... Uh, it shouldn't affect me making videos next week like it did this week, and I feel much better. Uh, and uh, Radiocraft, we're going to be busy with that this weekend, so I'll have another Radiocraft video coming out as well. We need to get started on the boardwalk, and we need to get that Iron Golem farm finished up. And we also need to get busy on some of the seaport buildings as well. So, yeah, lots of stuff to do on Radiocraft also. Really enjoying uh, putting those videos together for you and hanging out with everybody and having a good time. So, I do appreciate you watching the video and checking it out. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I am the Radio Man 3 and as always, I will talk to you again next time.